Hey everyone, it's Angel from Fresh Updates Now here at the Dally Division. I'm here with 1574 Miss Car out of Israel. Today we're going to look at their bot, talking about some of their cool stuff that they're doing with their intake, trap mechanism, climber, shooter. Also going to look at some of the software stuff that they're they're doing here and all this and more on this episode of Behind the Bumpers. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. So, or let's start off talking about some of these uh, SWORP modules that I see right here and tell me about the development of these right here. So, We've been running a custom serve module since 2022. Uh, after the last season and seeing how uh, the games were played, we decided to try and create a custom uh, differential serve and we designed it over the off season. This is it here. Um, we used the planetary gearbox inside to differentiate the two motors for the drive and rotate of the, of the wheel. And after the new rules update uh, and seeing that we couldn't use this uh, this module anymore. Instead of going back to our old ones, we decided to uh, manufacture a new one, uh, a new one entirely, uh, which is way smaller and way more compact than our previous one. How this works is we have our drive motor up here, and it's the shaft goes all the way down into this uh, gear, which is connected to the other one, which drives the bevel that drives the, the wheel, and then the rotate. Uh, the rotating motor, which uh, is connected to the large gear. And we also have this uh, 3D printed part, which is connected straight to the rotating of the wheel and is right into the uh, through bore encoder. That way, whenever the, whenever the wheel turns, we know exactly at what, uh, at what angle it is. So, or tell me, uh, why did y'all decide to go with a custom swerve drive instead of one of the uh, off the shelf Drives. So one of our philosophies as a team is we don't buy any already manufactured stuff. We design everything in house, and also having something having something designed ourselves makes sure we know how to fix it way more than other teams. We know everything about this module entirely. We can uh, we can fix everything in like five minutes from it because we've been in the design of it. Well. Very cool swerve modules. Let's move over to your intake. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay. So, starting off this season, we had a big uh, decision whether to go with under the bumper or over the bumper. One of our main things with going under the bumper was that there would be many collisions, especially during Auton. So, having an under the bumper intake means we can run to the note as fast as we can. Uh, one of the things we most wanted to get was a touch and go style intake, which is the moment the note touches the rollers of the intake, the driver can drive off. Can drive off. We do that using a beam brake right here, which uh, which changes the LED colors the moment the note is in the intake. So that way, while the note is traveling up into the shooter, the driver can already drive over to uh, the shooting location. Well, speaking about your shooter, can you give us a little bit of details about that? Okay. Whenever we try and shoot, whenever we intake the note, uh, the entire uh, shooter moves to a specific angle. That way the note can pass through it. Then uh, the note stay, uh, stays here during, uh, while the robot is traveling using these two beam brake sensors. And then while we want to shoot, we, the two vertical rollers are set to a specific RPM which moves them over to the uh, horizontal rollers. That means we get a very accurate shot. Uh, one thing that we did as a part to many other teams is we have a high uh, rotate angle. As opposed to other teams who have it low, we decided to do that. So we decided to do that so it will be easier to control the angle and having the very fast spinning wheels close to the angle. So can we get a demonstration of how the uh, intake and the shooter work together? Okay. Let's move over to Lebron, who's gonna talk to us about their climber and trap mechanism, Lebron. 
Okay, so early on in the season, we knew we have to get the the, the stage uh, ranking points, like uh, 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 pretty much every game. So uh, there are two methods uh, to do that, uh, using the trap mechanism and using the climbing mechanism. So when we designed the climbing mechanism, we had in mind that we have to, uh, to be as consistent as possible and to still uh, be able to uh, uh, deploy the node in the trap. So uh, we needed to uh, get a way to uh, climb uh, as high as possible and still have a robust climber. So what we did, we designed this uh, two, uh, two profiles uh, rail that uh, the hooks slide on. And then this way we can um, uh, attach attach uh, plates to the sides of the of the profiles, but still have uh, six faces to slide on. And uh, it uh, it creates a very robust uh, climber and still uh, climbs the uh, the highest we can inside the robot. Um, uh, another cool feature of our, um, of our uh, climber is the two hook mechanism. Uh, uh, the like when we climb in the middle uh, to the play top, we use these two hooks uh, just to just to climb in the middle. And then we, we climb on the side wheels. Uh, if we climb on the right, on the, if we climb on the right, we use this hook and this hook. And then we always stay level to the ground no matter where we climb. Um, and that helps us uh, do harmony if we need it. Uh, yeah, and leaves the chain uh, in a in a, a good shape for the other teams to climb on. Um, another cool feature of our climber is, um, is like a, so. Another cool feature of our, of our climber is the is like this shaft. We don't need um uh, to power uh, each side at the, like with different motors. We just run sh uh, shafts like uh, all across the robot, and then we can um, deploy the, the this mechanism upwards and uh, yeah and climb. Can we see the climber in action? <laughs> Very cool. And then you're going to talk to us about uh, your trapping. Yeah, so um, we wanted our trap mechanism to be as uh, lightweight as possible. So uh, first of all, I'll start with the, with the actu actuator. Um, that's a sprocket actuator with uh, holes in, the, in, the, in this profile. And then the, the spoke just slides on the, on the holes and this goes up, upwards. Um, we can power this from a uh, uh, motor download down, uh, so this way we have a, a center of mass low and still have a pretty um, fast actuator. Uh, the other thing is we needed to keep the end effector really lightweight. So how we do that, we ran uh, dead axles from uh, this plate to this plate and we had with bearings this, um, this tubes here uh, that run on them. And then this way we don't have to um, get more uh, to attach this plate uh, to this plate in, other, in a method that can block the node. We can just um, we can just uh, use the dead wheels inside. How we how we move the node inside this thing is using the shooter, where um, the node comes here and goes upwards, and this way we can stop it uh, inside the end effect loop. Can we see that in action? Yeah. Well, very cool, very interesting, but mechanic mechanical isn't the only aspect of the robot. There's also a software side. So let's move over to the leg. Who's gonna talk to us about the control system and some of the software stuff of your robot? So, uh, one of the most interesting features of a robot is our line light cameras. We actually have three line light cameras mounted on a robot, two for AP dux detection and one for uh, auto intaking in teleop in, in, and in autonomous. So, uh, both of the line light here and the line light here on the side are running AP dux detection um, for detecting also the speaker AP dux and also the AP dux who are on the feeder on and on the stage during auto and teleo. Um, one of my favorite features is our auto intake. Uh, we are using a third camera here in order to run a machine learning de and object detection on the node. And in autonomous, we are able to um, auto intake the node 
instead of just running a trajectory and uh, get into the node by a specific uh, path, we are uh, closing um, a PID loop on the node itself and we're able to um, more accurately uh, intake nodes, even if the other alliance or other robot pushed them away of their starting position. Um, another feature it helps us is when the uh, robot is getting closer to intake a node, uh, it, it can see both nodes instead of just one. So if the other alliance uh, already intake uh, one of the nodes, a robot automatically knows uh, to get to the other node and intake, and intake it instead. Uh, it really helps us a lot in all our matches. Um, another interesting fact about a robot is that in previous years, um, when one of our sensors in the swerve disconnected, um, the whole module uh, stopped uh, driving and it would cause many problems in our drive. So uh, we added a mechanism which is able to detect when the through boring encoder uh, is disconnected. And instead of uh, using the absolute encoder, it's using the internal encoder of the motor. And uh, that's how we are able to keep driving uh, even if the encoder is disconnecting. Well, 1574 Miscar, so great to see you here at FIRST Championship and we wish you the best of luck here on Dolly. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.